Oh my god. <laughs> A so, couple of people highlight we're going to be presenting tonight about kayak racks and transporting it. There's a couple of discussions we hopefully will be on the water again soon. Uh, probably not any shuttles or van trips for a little bit. So a little bit better how to put your boats and get them in places. We're going to hear some different styles each of us use. So you'll hear from Chris, Doug, Andrew, myself. Evan's probably going to talk a lot too because he likes to interrupt us. Um, <laughs> And I hope you get some do. questions. Also, Diane is here. She's got uh, tell us about her equipment. And after that, just a gear discussion. See what everybody has. It's their favorite piece. What works well. So I'm not going to mute anybody when we start presenting because I want you to be able to just speak up, ask questions. If you want to mute yourself, you got background noise. That's fine. Uh, anything before we start? Anybody not familiar with how to use Zoom or? And controls. Are you cut off after 45 minutes or do you have the paid version? No, nope, I'm paying for this. So you can go as long as you want. All right. So this is also being recorded and streamed on Facebook. So uh, keep it clean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh oh, I'm out, Jeff. <laughs> Good thing you warned her. Oh, hold on. I've lost a presentation. Now. I got to find it again. Oh. The amateurs. <laughs> Sorry, I accidentally closed too many windows. I have it on my phone. I'll send it to you. No. <laughs> yeah, I think so. You sent me a copy. I, I, I have it here. I just closed it when I thought I was prepping earlier. All right, so Chris, Doug, Andrew, whenever you have something you want to say, just say it. Uh, I know I saw you threw some stuff in the presentation we went. Uh, goal today is just talk about the different types of racks that are out there. Um, and then benefits, advantages of some versus others. Uh, some ways that we'll get to at the end of how to take care of your boat. We did a couple weeks ago how to get your boat ready. Now we'll talk about how to store it. Lorraine's going to talk about some things to make portages earlier easier for you. I didn't tell her that ahead of time yet. No, you didn't. I just saw that. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> your cart, your wheelie cart. Um, I did not prepare anything about canoes or trailers, but we can talk about that if we have questions. Um, so, just the whole purpose <gasps> is so we can all get our <laughs> here safely. We'll talk about how to load and unload and what needs a lot of space, what doesn't need a lot of space. And a little bit about keeping it secure so nobody else steals your stuff. You could fit a few more on that car, I think. That's just a picture of the car on Facebook for a few years. So cool. That's awesome. That is. Uh, mainly, I'm going to focus on the rooftop stuff. And you can see lots of different options for going on the roof. Um, some are better than others, depending on how you want to use them. Uh, I'm a big fan of the J cradles. And the reason for that is they don't take up a lot of space in your roof. So you can carry more than one boat there. Um, there are some disadvantages. You have to load it from the side, which means you have to lift a little bit higher usually. Uh, we'll see a video of loading them. We'll see, carry that to a video of loading from the rear. And um, go about that. Other thing about the J cradles is you can pull them flat when you're not using them. Sometimes, depending on which ones you have. And you can put several of them up there. Like I've had up to four different sets of J's on my truck at one time. Uh, just price points. They come in a rigid form that doesn't fold up. And then the folding ones, these are all current models, current prices. Uh, there are some discontinued models that I like, like the Kuat Class 4 down here at the bottom, which I can't find. I don't know why they stopped making it or what's going on, but we'll talk about that one anyway. So this is the J style. It's the one I like. That's what class four on the back of my truck. And I prefer the folding one because it's just clean and it's not there when you don't want it to be. So you're not driving around with antlers all the time. Um, Andrew's going to talk a little bit later on about strapping. But one of the things that I find easier with the J cradle is put your straps on before you put the boat on. 
Um, and because mine fold, I usually put the straps on before I even unfold them. Just the way I don't have to reach all the way up there to it. Um, you can see the J-Style holds the boat on its side um, pretty securely, no problems with it. Uh, Andrew will get more detail about strapping, but it is also strapped to the bars, not just to the carrier. So that if the carrier fails, it's not going to leave your car. That's always a good point for any type of rack, I would assume. Always yeah, so Andrew's got some details about strapping, some hints there. Uh, but the key is redundancy and a way to make sure if something fails, it's still tied on. So I made a quick video. We're going to do a video of loading and unloading the J's. You're going to see lifting on the side. You got to lift a little higher. Um, and you see, I'll, I'll get all my straps ready before I get the boat up. And do we have sound? Sorry. So one of the disadvantages of side load is you do have a lot more lifting to do. And even with a second person, it's not always easier because when you're lifting by yourself, you're lifting the fat part of the boat so you can lift a little higher. When you lift with a partner, you're usually at the ends, you're, you still have to lift higher to get over the cradles. You make that look so light the way I you pick know. that up. Oh. So, you need the step stools to get up. Practice. My brother does carry step stools in his truck. <laughs> uh, it's hard to see on this picture, but this end of the rack here has a little plastic ramp on it. So that's common in most of the folding ones. You just, you just push up on there and it'll drop into place. You're not having to lift all the way up and into the rack. You can just get on the edge and push. I like your racks. So I've gone through several different versions. I've had a couple different Thule models. This is the, the Kuat right now on there. Um, and we don't need to watch me strap it all down. Now I would say my setup has a bit of an advantage over a lot of people because I can get in here underneath it because of the truck. If you have a big SUV, you might have trouble because you got all this car here, so you can't quite get underneath the boat to lift it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a big SUV, you're not good at lifting, then you'll see a rear load might be better for you. And we'll, later on, we'll talk about some ways to help get them up there. Uh, Lorraine's car has a saddle style on it, which if you only have one boat, it's great. If you want to carry more than one boat, it might not fit them both on the car unless you have supersized bars. With this, the bars that I have here, I can have my kayak on the end like this, and I can put J's on the other side and put another kayak on. Yeah, most cars aren't designed to have two boats laying flat. Yeah. Uh, by the, the recommended bar sizes from Thule and Yakima, you probably will not fit it unless you have a big car. Uh, you can get away sometimes going up one size on the bars. Uh, it depends on the bar system you use. Some advantage of the saddle system is your boat's flat. So it, it cradles it nicely, takes some of the pressure off it. It's easier for one person to load it. If you have a, a, like a fishing sit on top kayak, there's some cradles there that have a heavier load. Uh, the, the folding style is usually good for about 140 pounds. I think there's some 175 pound ones for the, the, uh, the big kayak ones or big fishing ones. Most of the ones that we talk about, the saddle racks and the J-Rack so far, will all fit on a factory bar. Uh, when we talk about Diane's stuff, she's going to talk about equipment that will not go on factory bars. Um, if you do saddles, it's a little harder to strap because your straps aren't just hanging right in front of you. So you got to go around the boat and, and do it. Lorraine has a system she's worked on where she just throws the straps around. I don't like throwing straps because I kind of like my paint. Um, well, that's why I have the pads on it so it doesn't nick the paint. You said that was going to be your special presentation night, the, the pad you made. Oh, did I? Um, couple I'll different run out and get it if you want. I didn't even spill outside. That's all right. Uh, with the saddles, there's different varieties. 
like the one Lorraine has here is the sweet roll. The back cradle actually has a couple little wheels in it, so you can roll on that. Uh, Yakima hand roll is a little bit larger rollers, but you have to buy either two sets of these or a set of hand rolls and a set of deck hands uh, because it's only only one piece. Uh, Tuli has very similar. They don't have any rollers though. I don't know why. Um, but they do have the dock glide, which has a very slick coating on it. So you can slide it up there and then the front pad kind of grips it a little bit. And Yakima and Tuli will both fit each other's systems, each other's crossbars. I think, yes, we have videos of Lorraine. Yeah, but it slipped on this first go. It doesn't normally. <laughs> Um, you'll see this might be easier if you're trying to do this by yourself and we're, later on we'll talk about Lorraine has a um, a guide she mounts on a window help get it up there you can see if you're not lifting as much you can get one end up on the car and kind of support it and push up there And she doesn't like to use her wheels for some reason, but they're there. Uh, her um, cockpit still kind of gets in the way of that sometimes. In daylight, we can see her taking the boat off the car. You see, a lot less work if, if you don't want to lift as high. You're at lock 60? Mm-hmm. And that white mat I left on the roof that day, and I haven't seen it since. Oh. I've done that. <laughs> I went back, but it was gone. <laughs> I've lost two carpets that way. <laughs> yeah. I had j racks stolen at the locks. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh, really? <clears throat> they didn't wow. have, my j racks did not have locks on them, so they were stolen at the lock. Yeah. Well, that so stinks. That does stink. Yeah, we've never, all these years. <laughs> yeah, no. haven't had anything so, missing. Generally, the, the, the entry-level products are not going to have locking systems on them. Uh, the the Holoport Pro and the JLo both have lock cylinders in them. The, the base forms don't. The caution in these locks are usually all they do is hold down a piece of plastic. So just hit it with a hammer, you can take somebody's stuff anyway. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> uh, Doug and Chris, you want to talk about stackers? Um, sure. But uh, this is actually on top of Jeff's truck, but our racks are uh, the same. One thing we really love about the Thule stacker is uh, it uses uh, less bar space, so basically you can fit multiple boats on. Can you go back one? I was going to read down through your bullet point. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's right. Uh, yeah, you can put multiple boats on, as you can see right here. We've had up to four boats on top of our car, uh, all standing five. on the sides. What's that? We've got five on them. Okay, we can just have a, uh, a wider crossbar. <laughs> You're not recommended, by the way. <laughs> I'm surprised you can put that many on with the weight restrictions on the roof of the car. That's on a truck with a truck bar. You Got it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, even on our car, uh, we have a, a Subaru, and it's fine. Uh, with, with four boats, I think it just comes up to the weight restriction. So <laughs> it wasn't a problem whatsoever. Um, it fits over any crossbar, uh, the Yakima or the Thule's. Um, it is one of the lower costing rack systems. Um, but for us, it, it, it's, it's very efficient. Um, all right, Jeff, you want to go to the next slide? And as you can see, it's, it's nice. It folds flat and out of the way. Uh, what's also nice about this particular rack is we have a canoe also that with 
the stacker, if you leave it down, you can just set the canoe right over top of it and uh, it doesn't get in the way whatsoever. Looks really cool because it, it looks here like you're also carrying a Jeep. Yeah, you like that, huh? <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> a little hard to get the Jeep up there, but I think Man, I'll tell you. <laughs> and it is kind of teetering on the edge there. Yeah. So it's a Jeep. It's got big wheels. It's hanging on. So just a couple of cautions with the stacker. It works great if the boats are all very similar to each other. Sure. If you have uh, like a pungo and um, a current designs next to each other, sometimes you get either they don't fit well or you don't get a good tight seal around them. So yeah. it's great for whitewater boats. Uh, if you have all very similar touring boats, good, but like a wreck boat and a, and a touring boat next to each other might not fit as tight as you want. Right. And then in that case, we have done that. Then we've put individual straps on each each boat instead of strapping two together. Doug, do you use um, bow and stern lines then also? Uh, I occasionally use a bow line if we're traveling uh, at a long distance on the highway. Uh, but for local travel where I'm not normally exceeding 40 miles an hour, then no, I don't. And I haven't run into a problem. Tuli and Yakima both make versions of this. They'll spec them to four boats. Once you go past the first two, you're going to need to get a second set of straps to the additional boats to go on the other side of the, the rack. Right. Well, yeah. It, it, it won't come with enough straps. Um, Andrew's going to talk more about strapping later on to answer some of John's questions. But I have a stacker you saw in my truck. I use it when I need extra boats, but otherwise I usually stick with the, the J-Racks. Um, Good to go on, Doug? Yeah, that's all I have to say. All right. Oh, sorry, I had more pictures. These came from Yakima and Thule. That's all right. Yeah, that is, that's not how we use the Thule stacker. <laughs> yeah, we normally run our strap through the top of the stacker itself and then go around the top of the kayak down to the bottom. No, I don't even think that's how they, in their manual, that's how they strap it in. I think that's just the picture. It's yeah, for aesthetics. It just kind of off guard when uh, you had that in there. But I didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, same with the Yakima one. I usually, I don't know. I usually have more center of the vehicle. Um, there are a couple racks that can do both a J and a stack. Um, not greatest at stacking, but they can do it. Um, actually, while we're on stackers, I'm gonna go back. Sometimes it's hard to load the second boat. Or like with the J-Racks, they, they'll sit in there just fine without you doing anything. The stackers, it's, it's resting there. You might have to hold it while somebody else straps it in. Or balance it very well. Yeah. It's not as easy for a single person to load. Right. Or in the wind. <laughs> and then these are a couple of products that Tuli and Yakima make that can do one boat great as a stacker or you can see it can go into a vertical position. Sorry, one boat is J cradle or go into a vertical position to be a stacker. Um, similar problems loading the second boat because you're going around and behind the, the upright and it's going to sit directly on the crossbar. It's not going to have any padded cradles, but you could put a, a bar pad on there if you wanted. Uh, this one on the right, the Tuli Compass. Uh, we just started carrying that at REI this year, so I'm not that familiar with it, but um, it has padding on both sides. Both of these models do have locks on them. You can see real clearly on the front of that, the, the ramp I was talking about to load with. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave has a J-Low. I was hoping he was going to join us and talk about it, but apparently he doesn't like playing with us tonight. <laughs> Dan here. I'm here. Has what I don't recommend doing is putting two holovators on the same car. Uh, before we get to Diane, I'm going to talk about dynamic uh, load rating. Most cars are good for 165 pounds, and that 165 pounds includes the crossbars, the carriers, and the boats. So we're going to do some quick math. Diane has 40 pounds right here in that holovator. 
40 pounds in that whole elevator. That boat's probably about 40 pounds. So that's 120 out of her 165 pounds without counting the base rack and anything she puts on this carry over here. But we're not going to pick on her yet. Uh, um, you'll have to pick on me too because I have two on my car as well. <laughs> yep, and uh, Rick and Judy it's, do. Yeah. Just to start out with, it really is hard to get your car with that one on the side. It doesn't drive well either. <laughs> but I'll explain that. You, do you want me to say something, Jeff? It's up to you. Do you want yeah. to talk about okay. the, the hot elevator so, or what we do? Yeah, no. Uh, these things are awesome. Um, you can see that this is in the down position, and so you only have to lift your boat that high. So, you know, with two hands, I could just lift it up that high, set it right into the cradle. While it's sitting there, I can even let go of it, get my straps. I usually have the straps ready, but um, it's easy. You strap it in right there, and he's going to show you in a minute, but then it lifts up, and it, it practically throws me up onto the roof. It has such uh, an action that it really, you really have to almost hold it back because it'll just throw it up there. Um, let's see, what are you saying? I have one. Too. They are expensive. Um, they're, did you look it up, Jeff? I think they're like six, 780 or something like that. I think they're over 700 now. Per unit. Oh, wow. So I have two units. Um, I was very fortunate. A couple ex-boyfriends have supplied these to me. They were exes at the time they supplied them to me. Oh, um, you're weak. <laughs> yeah, I, I show the next picture. You have the other pictures, right? I have some of them. So I, this I get is all in, pictures if you want. This is in like the halfway up position. This was what I posted to demonstrate that I really need a place to store these for the winter. Um, I don't have a place to store my kayaks. It took me a while to get it, so there I was in the winter. I do leave them on top of my car the whole summer. I leave both of them up there because I tend to like all of a sudden go do something. Um, do I have both of them up on one of them? I don't think so. Um, you did not give me a picture that has two on there. And they do fill up with water. So <laughs> when they're there all summer, I do take my stool, which I don't carry with me, but I have it at the house, and I will climb up with a big bucket or a, a big sponge and empty the rain out of them. I thought about putting a hole in the bottom of them to empty it out, but <laughs> someone advised me not to. Why not to get a cover for them? It would be nice, but I haven't found anything that doesn't flap off in the wind. So your regular covers so far have flapped away. So if you know now, of something that I have has a strap that goes around it and under the kayak mm -hmm. and then it hooks on the ends. Cool. I'll look into that. Thank you. I think that's a sealy, isn't it, Jeff? Uh, seal yeah. skirt. Seal skirt. Is it a skirt? A no, it's not a skirt. It's a, skirt. it's a cover. That's the brand. I'll look into that. That'd be great. It, it's a little tougher with the pongo because the cockpit's so big, though. Yeah, and that pongo doesn't have a good seal around it. Uh, the, it kind of flips out of the little ridge that it's supposed to be in, but you know, maybe, maybe it'd work. It'd be great. I got tired of doing that all the time. But the other thing I do, and again, little hint for all of you, uh, the reason I have them on top of my car, I was with, I'll be going into the city. Somebody said the party was lame. I said, I have both my kayaks on top. We carried them down the Walnut Street Bridge stairway, jumped over a couple fences, and got onto the Schuylkill at 11 o'clock at night. It's cool. I trespass a lot. All right, so if I did this right, we're seeing different pictures of Diane's carrier, right? You're seeing the yep. snow? And I, I guess I didn't give you any pictures with both of them up there? Yeah. That's all? That's Farron. Did you know Farron, Jeff? Nope. Uh, Matt Wright's dog? Oh, yeah, I probably met him at the Conchie Park. Yeah. I'm sorry, so I didn't think me. that's all you gave me. That's an REI party, you can tell because of all the cars with racks on them. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Oh, that was math. <laughs> no, not math. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I love my elevators. I have, I have one too, and I just love it. So when when I go kayaking, 
I usually end up loading my kayak on my car before I go to work because then I leave from work to go kayaking. What's the best way position for your kayak to be in storage for like that all day or doesn't it matter? What do you mean? It's Bottom. up top. But like, is it better be sitting flat on the side like in a J rack or better sitting in a cradle or oh. doesn't it matter? For a, a one day, it's probably not significant enough to make a difference. Uh, long term, as long as it's supported, it's okay. Okay. Um, big thing is some kind of cockpit seal, which I I can pull a picture of those later on. I don't have any input in this this presentation, but to keep the rain out. Uh, we talked earlier in the year about UV protectant, if it's gonna be out in the sun all the time. Uh, I'll, we can pull those up later on after the presentation if you wanna talk about different treatments you can do to help protect your plastic. Let me say one more thing about the elevator that I forgot. Somebody had mentioned having stuff stolen. Um, they're locked on, but there's the biggest piece that has the cradle part can come off and I know someone who every time that she takes her kayak out, she takes those parts off and puts them in her car so that nobody steals that piece of them, um, which is really kind of weird, but, but you can take them off. And, and they're really heavy. So if you just want to take them off while you know, you're driving around or you're driving somewhere far, you can take, take them off without taking the whole rack system off. Yeah, I don't see very many people take them apart, but it does have just a single pin. All you need to pull out, and then the whole piece will lift off. Um, on the left, the whole elevator has uh, some kind of gas piston support to lift it up with, and the one on the right by Yakima is more of a spring load. Uh, the advantage of the Yakima one is it folds flatter when not in use, whereas the Thule one, unless you take the, the assembly off the rack you got big antlers all the time. And they're so cool. You can find your car so much easier. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I use that to find my car in crowded parking lots. That's, uh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. And the one thing I wanted to say about the Hullivator is that I, I bought mine used off of someone on Craigslist. And if you keep your eye out, um, I see them for sale used um, all the time. So no need to spend $700. I think I got both of mine, uh, so two uh, two sets for uh, $400. Wow. I sold a set last year for 300. I put mine on uh, let go. I might have another set this year. Um, also, the whole elevator has really great padding compared to some of the other racks. Mm -hmm. That's true. So it cradles the boat well, it holds it tight. Uh, the upper pad, I think, is the one that adjusts down to set the width you need. It does. Because I have two different size boats, and one's really wide, and it's easy to just like adjust it for which boat I'm using. I know the Yakima Showdown is good for paddle boards also. I'm not sure about the whole evader. I doubt know? it. I tried to carry a big old ladder on it once, like a, you know, really big ladder and uh it didn't work out well <laughs> <Is your country? laughs> um, two other load assist ones uh they're rear loads and there's a big roller here so this assembly here with the roller on it slides backwards when you want to load and then you push it back up when you're done so you get the boat up and then you push everything forward again uh the toolie slipstream i can't find anymore so i don't know if they discontinued it Yakima Showboat, I think they came out with that last year. So uh, if you don't want big antlers up top, you're only gonna carry one boat, it might be an option for you. This entire carriage assembly is gonna be probably too wide to get two of them on the car at any one time. Uh, yeah, Jeff, I had the, the slipstream before I had the Doug Assist. <laughs> now you just bring Doug <laughs> It, it was it was nice it worked good i was able to yeah lift it up from the back and then slide it in yeah and one boat how does the doug assist work is that all right yeah yeah she calls good. me over and i just go. okay <laughs> <laughs> um, and then just 
other ways to make it easier for you. Lorraine has, I don't, it's not this actual piece. This is a Seattle sports one, a guide and a roller. Uh, Tool and Yakima will both make arms that can come out of the crossbars. So you just have to get it up onto that one arm. You can go back and lift the other end of the boat up and then push it on top. Uh, this Jack Elias, you sent me this on Facebook. The company, uh, uh, Oak Richard Rollers, you can just drop right there in the back of the, the SUV or they have a magnet mount also. Um, Lorraine had some kind of carpet she made. You can buy one already made. And we'll see this picture later on with Andrew. And there's other ways to make it easier for you too without buying stuff. Just open the front door and get the front of the boat up and put it in the crack between the door and the car. Mm. And then you go back and lift the back of the boat up. That's actually pretty easy. That's how I get my second one up. Do you or call Doug. That? Would you yeah. say this again? <laughs> uh, if you open the front door, you can lift the front of the boat up and drop it between the door and the car. Oh. oh, on top of the hinge. I found it easier to open the back, the second door, the back I, door. I've never tried it. Yeah. Huh. Um, I would not do it if you had to sit on top or fishing or tandem. Uh, I, I'm not sure what the, the door is actually rated to hold that direction. But a 40-pound boat, probably not enough to hurt it. Probably put a towel down or something to make it nice. Yeah, I put a blanket there, and that helped it. Right. So that way you're only lifting one into the boat at a time, I'm not trying sure. to get the entire weight up. Yeah. Um, these two bars, the Thule one and the Yakima one, they both slide inside when you're not using them. They are custom to their equipment only. And this one is only for the old square system. They don't have anything for the new bars. Um, and then trucks. Uh, this is two different truck racks. Uh, this is the Thule exporter on the left and the Yakima uh, overhaul on the right. And it just gets a lot of versatility. Uh, let you change out what's on top. So all the bars we're doing, although we're talking about boats, you just put bike carriers on them too. You're just good to go. Uh, Buster's not with us tonight, but he likes to keep everything in the back of the truck. So I have a, a six foot bed and 12 and 14 foot boats. So this is the long arm, sorry, Yakima long arm. And it just fits in the trailer hitch and adds four more feet of bed length. Do you have to put a flag on the back of that to be legal? Probably. <laughs> um, I put re dot reflective tape on here. Um, but I do have a flag I put on one of the boats also. Came, the flag came with it. It's a little faded and moldy now from too much time outside. Um, and then wheels. Lorraine's going to talk about wheels later on. This is, I mean, truck bed, it's great. You just got to remember it's behind you and you take up a lot more space parking. Uh, and if you don't want to spend all this money, there are cheaper ways to do it. And we'll find out even cheaper soon from Mr. Wolf. But set a phone block. Oh, you want me? To, oh, okay. Now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frugal. Economy mode, yes. It's phone blocks. I don't like them because they're awkward. You got to put them on and off the boat every time. So you strap them to the boat, then you lift them up on top of the car, then you strap everything down through the car doors. So the straps go through the car, and it's not something you leave on the car without a, a boat there. Same with the inflatable one, it straps around the roof through the doors. Mm -hmm. So it's only meant for while you're using it. It's not something you want to leave up there all the time. A um, little bit more somewhat permanent, Tuli and Yakima, sorry, Yakima and Cedar Summit make a one-piece foam pad with straps. Again, it's going to strap through the doors. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more durable than just foam blocks and uh, the inflatable pillows. Uh, this is designed for somebody who just is not going to have a roof rack on there, is not going to have crossbars, but you still need to do something with the boat. This system can be leave left on a little bit more, but at some point, if you're gonna be serious in boating, you probably should be serious into putting a, a roof system on the car. Um, I have not used either of these. They are within the last two to three years old. They've started marketing them, so I don't have any experience with them. Jeff, do you have prices on them? 
Uh, I have a handout. I have to find it. Okay. Uh, I, I want to say that. we're at like 120 to 130. Uh, let me figure out where I put that handout then. That's a good idea. Um, I'll find that handout once we get to Mr. Wolf. Sheesh, okay. Well, this is the most super economical model. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, I had a I have a Ford Flex with side rails, but I didn't have any cross rails on it. And uh, I looked into getting cross rails, and they were pretty expensive. So I basically made my own. Um, I got two pieces of black uh, two pieces of black pipe, uh, three quarter inch black pipe from uh, Lowe's. Uh, I measured the, the length of the rail between the rails because they because it's different in the front and back one of the rails is one of these crossbars is longer than the other um and uh went to lowe's had them cut it and they actually threaded the ends for me um uh i used the threads i'll talk about that in a second uh and then i just drilled four uh holes through the black pipe and then used uh, three inch u three inch u bolts to lock it onto my onto my side rails. Uh, before I put them on, I, I get swim noodles every year. I get a brand new set of swim noodles. I, I, I spray paint the black pipe uh, and then I run water through the, black, the noodle so it slips on and I force it over, the, 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 the uh, end caps are off and the U-bolts are off of course, but I slip the noodle over the, over the top so that gives a little bit of cushion for the, um, for the black pipe for my boat not being uh, pulled down against a black pipe. Then I just bolt them on the, t on the top of my car. Uh, it cost me about 25 bucks. Um, it's made up of swim noodles, black pipe, U-bolts, and those are th three quarter inch, those white ends are three quarter inch um, chair feet that you find for like kitchen chairs at, at Lowe's. And then I just force them over the threaded threaded uh, uh end pieces and uh away we go take them off every saying, winter are you saying they threaded those u-bolts for you no 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 the end of the pipe is threaded oh why well because i was going to use i was going to use uh when i first thought about doing this i was going to use um uh there's a a black pipe end cap that's cast iron Huh. And I was going to th thread that on, but for some reason the threading didn't match up very well, and I couldn't use the end caps. Uh, so I took those back, and I ended up putting just chair feet on the ends. And the threads are uh, rough enough that they they cut a little bit into the chair feet. So you uh, once they're on, you almost have, you have to screw them off and screw them back on again until they dry rot because they're just rubber out in the sun all all summer. And um, uh, away we go. Uh, I've had it for since 2015. This and I've I've carried my kayak with it since 2015. Um, I've replaced the noodles every year. I carry my kayak upside down, so I don't have to worry about rain getting inside my kayak. Uh, I it, the disadvantage is, of course, that it's it really can only the way it's currently set up. Even though my I have a station wagon. I can only carry my kayak on top. It won't carry two kayaks the way because it, they just don't. Stay, it's, it lays flat across the deck uh, of the uh, of the kayak upside down, and it's and then I strap it in with uh, straps. I've seen pictures of a lot of people making stuff out of wood. Um, anytime you're making your own rack, just caution that you are assuming all liability. It's not like buying somebody else's product who has some product liability behind it. So. If something fails on this rack, it's all on John. Yeah, that's true. So uh, my recommendation is not to do it, but here it is. Because if you just can't afford anything else and you need to get your boat somewhere, there's choices. I mean, even just throwing a pool noodle down on top of the car and then strapping is better than nothing. But just anything that's not doesn't have any kind of product insurance from it is a liability you're taking on yourself. Um, Andrew, your turn. All right. So 
probably one of the most important parts of kayak transport is actually strapping it down. Um, if you forget that, well, your kayak's not going to be with you when you arrive to your destination. Um, so there's a couple different types of uh, straps that you can get. You can get the the regular buckle straps, which is the uh, the top left picture. The, the coated ones, which is, they call a buckle bumper. Um, you have one that has a bumper on one side, and then there's also the um, fully enclosed. And um, I've only ever seen Tully has the fully enclosed. I don't I don't know if any others have them or not. But basically, the 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 bumpers, they prevent any damage when you're throwing your straps over um, your car or to the paint or windows. Or to your and, partner. Yeah. <laughs> I've been hitting the head multiple times. Yeah, she hit me in the head too. Yeah, she <laughs> ain't for it. Got me once. <laughs> See? You remember. Oh, I made a memory. I'm part of paddling with, with Chris. I mean, yeah, you're bound you're to get hit in the head when, when you're paddling with Chris. Hit you in the head with the I would never hit Andrew in the head. <laughs> everyone purpose. else, yes, just not Andrew. No, not but you'd hit everyone paddle. else, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I've done it with a paddle a number of times. <laughs> so um, do you guys know about the locking straps Tooley makes? I have I not used them. These. They're excellent. So can I take a minute or were you going to? No, you can go ahead. So it's Tooley straps, Go ahead. but it has- Hold on, sorry, wait, wrong can person. Can you make a speaker? Uh, all right. You good? Maybe, we'll find out. Is that highlighting can you? Can you hear me? No, that's- yeah. Highlighting her, but she's um, not- uh, Yeah, okay, now we can see you. Okay. Yeah, she's full so Thule has a um, lockable strap. So it's a regular strap, but- it has a lock back here that once you put the strap through, you then close it and lock it and the strap's locked. And it has a metal piece throughout the whole um, strap. So it's harder to oh. cut. Of course, if you have bolt cutters, you can still cut it, but it has a metal piece through the strap That's and it's clever. like regular straps that it buckles, but then it has this, um, piece that closes and you lock it. Oh, that's cool. Very nice. Very cool. They're $80 for 10 feet and 90 for 13 foot. All right. Okay. And actually they're on sale for $63.96 for the 10 foot right <laughs> now. Right. Totally. We're going to go to REI's anniversary sale right now. So everything Thule Yakima is 20% off. Oh. Yeah. All right. Let's figure out how to get rid of Diane now. Diane, how, how, does, it, how does it load? Does it load the same way? It's the same thing. Um, so it's got the buckle part. Let's see in, in here. Okay. Yeah. So it's got, it's hard for me to see it. So it oh, goes okay. in okay. here. Yeah. And then, you know, it presses. And then once it's through, then it closes and locks it. And there's okay, a. Okay, got it. That's, not, that's very clever. There. That's very yeah. clever. And like I said, it's got it. I don't know if you can see the indentation, but it actually all through the middle mm. is a okay, cord. A, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Very nice. Cool. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I don't use them because I generally don't park anywhere I'm concerned about it. And if I am, then I will put, uh, I have a lasso lock I'll use. which basically two big cables with loops in them that join together in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, this is not the actual one I have used because this is same brand, a different model. They don't have mine available right now. Um, and anything else on this page? Yeah, uh, the ratchet straps. Um, I have it there in, in bold for everybody. Do not use ratchet straps. You can actually over tighten and um, damage your kayak. All right, and in uh, terms of strapping your kayak, some other things to consider. Uh, there's the bow and stern lines. Um, you can see them on my car there on the front and the back. Uh, and then there's also hood and trunk anchors. And 
Um, those mostly you want to use if you don't really have any attachment points under your car. Um, I happen to have some, so I don't actually use them, but I have seen them used. And basically, you, you know, you open up your trunk and that um, fits inside, and you just close it and hold it in place. And then uh, another thing to for the um, the ratchet or the bow and uh, bow and stern lines is um, they're just basically additional securing for the kayak. And uh, really, if you're going to go on the, ho the highway, you should probably put them on. And um, the best practice really is to use them every time. And uh, what would happen if your uh, straps were to fail, it would basically prevent your boat from kind of flying off. Andrew, um, what's the loop in the upper left picture? So that is a uh, part that comes with the strap. It's a, it's a fabric uh, loop that basically comes with it. And what okay. you can do is you can put that on instead of using the, um, the carabiner directly onto your, your boat. Gotcha, thanks. So every manufacturer is gonna tell you to use your balance turn lines every time. Um, in common practice, you'll see a lot of us don't, which is poor form, because really, like Andrew has, he talk about small uh, bar spread. So the balance turn lines are there to keep it from moving sideways in the wind. And if your rack system fails, they keep it from flying into traffic and other cars. So yeah, your, your boat's still gonna get damaged, but you're not gonna damage anybody else's car. They're also really good at always being there in front of you. So when you go to your garage, you remember there's a boat on top because you can see the bow line. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. It is. I do know somebody who forgot they had a bike on their roof and drove into the garage and Ooh. did a lot of damage. There has got to be a device that someone can invent that has a solar or a sonar that reminds you of that stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot. I travel a lot with my kayaks on and my bike on. I just did three and a half months across the country and I had to remind myself every time I went through these like tunnel kind of things that I was nine and a half feet high, or maybe it was more than that. I can't remember. Okay. Real quick though, I put this together so that you could see this. Earlier I didn't have earlier I didn't have the uh, piece through it. Can you see that? Whoops. Mm -hmm. Here we go. And then and, and there's a steel cable those. embedded in that strap. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Didn't have everything prepped. Okay. Uh, with these loops on the side here, the Andrew talked about the hood loops. These are quick loops because there's big rubber piece like garden hose on there. They also have ones that have an eyelet where you can just pull out a bolt under your hood and uh, bolt it through the eyelet and keep them there all the time. Uh, I've used them. They're great for just quick and easy to use. Um, and if you don't have a spot to get around to and get your balance turn straps down, it's the best thing to do. Uh, oh, Andrew's got more. Yeah, um, just a quick strapping your kayak. I'll go through them. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. So first things first, always check your straps for signs of wear and tear. Um, you know, they, they last for a while, but if you see any rips or any sorts of signs of that it's going to fail soon, don't use them. Um, and then second of all, um, feed your straps through your rack prior to loading the kayak. Um, makes it a lot easier. You don't have to actually then climb up on top of your, uh, your roof to get the straps on afterwards. Uh, put the kayak on the rack is next. Um, either throw or, you know, gently uh, place your straps over your kayak um, and then check that the straps are not twisted or crossed. Check who's uh, on the other side before you throw them. <laughs> that's true too, yeah. Make sure Trust you to remember that step. <laughs> you gotta look so you can aim. Um, and then I have uh, some folding racks that have a sort of a, a feed through. So, Basically, just 
I feed the open end of the strap through the holder. Um, if you don't have a feed through hole, uh, a lot of the new ones don't have them, then you can um, feed it around the, the support that's on your car. Um, and I'll usually go around the crossbar anyway. Just give me that little extra redundancy. If the carrier fails, I'm still tied to the crossbar. Yeah. Yep, and then uh, after that, you know, feed the open end through the buckle and tighten. Um, you just want it snug, you don't want it over tight. Again, you don't want to damage your boat. Um, and then uh, you can either daisy chain the free end of the strap or put it inside your car. So I have on the, uh, the bottom left, the, the left side of it is uh, just put inside the car and the right side is daisy chain. Um, one thing, if you do put it inside your car, make sure it's not raining, your car will actually get wet because the water will wick through and uh, <laughs> actually drop down in, into your car. Uh, and then put on the balance stern lines last. Don't put them on first because you can actually, your kayak will uh, move up and down. Um, and also do not put them on the shock cord. You'll overstretch it. Um, you can see my handle. I actually did that. So my handle is not retracting on the, uh, the kayak. And also since they're ratchet straps, do not over tighten them. Just, you don't have them snug. Not all of them are ratchets anymore. Pulley's got to put in a weird piece in there instead of a ratchet. Uh, even though we gave a quick overview and Andrew was very detailed about strapping, you got to read the manual because some of them have very specific ways of strapping them down than others do. I do have a one other thing. The oh, uh, wrong way. I'll go to it. There we are. Go ahead. Um, when if you're going to have your kayak on for a long period of time, especially sometimes we would leave early in the morning, it would be cool, and then they'd be on and it would get hot. Um, yeah, their straps can loosen, so if it, yeah, always double check, tighten them up, or after a while, or if it rains and it heats up, the weather changes while they're on there. You can definitely loosen up. Every time you stop for gas or Wawa, just give a tug on each strap, make sure they're still secure, and put your cockpit seal on, especially if you're going to leave it out all day in the rain. Lorraine has had some full boats before. Yeah, I have. I've got a video of it too. It's a good water collection system for your garden, though. There you go. A rain barrel. Cleans your kayak out, too. Uh, Lorraine, this is you. That is me. And those, actually, I have my uh, wheels right here. <laughs> These were the best investment I ever made, although I do like the ones Jeff had now. But mine do not uh, collapse. They just have these uh, clips at the end and you just put it around the end of your kayak and snap it on. And then there's a hook that you hook into the uh, back of the cockpit and you're done. And then when I get to the water, I just take it off and hook it on the back and take it with me. But as when it comes to portaging, there's no way I could lift that kayak myself. So it works out great to have those wheels. Do you have a link to those wheels? Because I like your wheels better than my wheels. Um, I don't, but I can get it. Where's my phone? I got these at REI, you know, I don't like four or five years ago. We don't stock those anymore, Lorraine. Say that again? We don't stock them anymore. Oh, okay. But Do we sell them, but not stock them? No. Okay. Uh, I put a PDF in the chat box that has a list of almost every product that we've talked about tonight. And the manufacturer for those carts, I put a link straight to them because we don't have it as a REI product. Hmm. Uh, hers on the left is called the kayak cart. Yeah, I was just gonna look on it and see what it says. Uh, the other one, mine is made by Sea to Summit. A uh, little bit larger, a little bit easier to roll, takes up more space though. And somewhere I'll have to find it. I had a picture of it sitting in the cockpit or in a, a uh, bulkhead. 
Uh, we talked about security already, did it with um, Diane. So this is just an example of lassos. Uh, some long-term storage ideas. Sorry, it was a question. Uh, this is Suspense, who makes a lot of these racks, and this is their recommendations for what's the best way to store your boat long term. Um, you might want to read your boat's owner's manual. Some of them have different ideas, but the key is you want to distribute the load pretty much at the bulkheads. So the dagger here on the top, it's got a bulkhead for the front and the rear, so they're kind of grabbing it right at those two bulkheads. Uh, I think this is a current designs on the bottom um, and just the way they're carrying it here it's actually loaded on a piece of webbing so it's not a hard support it's wrapped around the boat it's taking some of the loads not creating pressure points uh, so this was my original storage system which if it sits here long term it will kind of put pressure on different spots of the boat you see little indents from sitting on the plywood, or sorry, the two by fours. On the right here, these are the, the spins racks, which has that webbing there to hold it and create it a little bit better. Um, <laughs> well, and I didn't know that picture in there. You can see you do the same thing with just your own hooks and webbing. Yeah, well, actually, on the bottom where my kayak, the orange one, is hanging underneath what is called a, uh, it's just a J-rack that I'm alone. It actually screws right to the wall. So Chris's kayak actually sits in the cradle. My kayak hangs underneath by about, it, it's uh, a one inch webbing. And then the other two up top, yes, I just put eye hooks directly into the wall studs. And then I used a, uh, a strap that hooks from the loop that I screwed into the wall around the kayak and then back to the same loop. And those are also one inch uh, webbing straps. What They're about standing right your kayak on? Sorry. Go what ahead. About... Someone had a question? Yeah, what about standing your kayak on the end, on the stern? I actually don't do that because I don't have the room to do that. Yeah, um, it, it works if you have the ceiling height. It, if you it, have what? If you have a tall enough ceiling, it'll work. But that's okay you can, to do it that way? Yeah, I mean, that's how they're kept in the store. Uh, I mean, I've seen them stored that way for long term. I, I've never done it myself because... Well, I, a, I, a fourteen foot boat would take a, a lot of space. Yeah, you know, mine's twelve and a half, and it does fit because all the walls in the shed where I store are taken up with other stuff. So there's a beam where I can actually stand it up, and I can get it towards in the middle of the shed, and it stands up. If that's the only way you got to store it, then that's what you got to do. Yeah. I mean, okay. I try to store it in a way that it's made to go. So boats like to be flat in the water and spread their load out that way. Or not okay. really structural end to end, but if that's what you can do, you, you, you got to do something to store it. I, I just was hoping it's not a bad way to store it. <laughs> it's not a great way to store it, but it's not going to damage it. Okay, that's good to know. And then what I did, and I don't have a picture of it, is I made a rack on wheels that will hold two kayaks, and I made that out of PVC piping. I'm sorry, Lorraine, I forgot about that. I would have asked you to get a picture in here. Nice. Well, I don't know if I, I, I might have a picture. I don't know if it would show up though. Um, just credit slide. I, some of these pictures are mine. Some are from other people presenting. And then I just took them from REI and from the manufacturers. Um, and I did put the PDF in the chat box about all the products I had here. I don't have the Malone one that Doug uses. Um, I don't have any Malone experience. So I, I just kind of stuck with the ones that either I have experience through REI or personal use. Uh, the only picture I have on the phone here, and I just lost it. Um, it wasn't complete. Now it's 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 a little different, but I'll show you if I can find it again. All right. Well, Lauren, While you're looking. Oh, oh, go ahead. So I was actually just going to ask, and I, this has more to do with theater storage again. It, given you know where we're at, 
what's the harm in storing it outside year round? Uh, UV light damages okay. the plastic. So as long as you keep a good UV protectant coat on it or keep it covered, but not tightly covered, get some airflow in there. Uh, squirrels. Oh yeah. Birds. Yeah. Spiders. I don't um, know if you can see it, but that's <laughs> part of it before I finished it. You can't see not it Not with the virtual background, Lorraine. Yeah. Send, send the picture to Jeff. He can, he can, put, he can share it. Mm. <laughs> send me my email, not my text. A couple other huh? things. Oops. Email it, don't text it. Uh, Megan, as long as you have a cockpit seal on there, I've kept mm -hmm. mine out over the winter. Yeah. Uh, Off the ground or on the ground? Off. Okay. Yeah. Um, either on a four by four before I had the rack system or on the racks. But my racks, I, I have all, all quick release so I can take them and put them inside for the winter too. I, I'm guilty. My boats all lived outside this winter because I just because of my reasons, I couldn't actually get them in storage. So I have a rack that holds four boats. It's made out of wood. They spent the entire winter there. I just uh, kept their covers on, their, their cockpit covers on so nothing climbed inside. Couple, um, Jeff, I was wondering if you were gonna get to the ones where it's a rope hanging, it has a pulley that'll go down so that you can put your boat in the two cradle. It's not really a cradle. They're just rope, really. And well, then there's a, it'll lift it. So some people will have it in their garage if they have a car that you can do this with, where it's right over the car, <laughs> and then they just lower it down onto the car and strap it in. That's I awesome. can't do that, but I keep mine up there in the off season, one of them, I can keep up there in the off season underneath my porch. Um, yes, that's it. But it's not made to go down all the way to the ground. It's really made to take it down to your car. Uh, so I have to wrestle it up there. I do keep my box in it now, my, like that showing, but it can be used. Uh, Jeff, Mike here. Hey, I'm a, uh... I'm kind of a fan of foam blocks, <laughs> and I didn't mention it earlier, but I did see you had foam blocks there. I think what you were saying there is you put the foam blocks directly on the roof. Yeah. All right. Well, this is my car. Maybe you can see it. I, I put them on the yeah. crossbars on the roof rack. Yeah, Mike, I was talking about if you don't have a roof rack, that's the foam yeah. block rack. So, so this is what I do. Uh, you know, put them on the roof rack, and, that, and then I put on the back here uh, a bathroom mat, and I just push it up the back, and then I strap across. It doesn't cost very much, and it seems to hold up. And for storage through the winter, I just put them down in the basement on uh, on top of the foam blocks, which I take off the top of the car. So everybody has their own way, but that's what I've been doing. What happens if you have a moon roof on your car, but no roof rack? Ooh. I don't know. I have a moon roof, but I got the roof rack, so yeah. don't open well, it. Yeah, don't open it. Don't put pressure on that. Uh, uh, I would not put your phone blocks on top of the glass. Never. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and the universal phone block system, as Mike said, can be used with racks or without racks. Yeah. Um, if you don't have racks, you should be strapping it to the boat before it goes on the roof. Sure. Yeah, mine stay up there through the last kayak of the season. So this year, that would have been the luminaries. And I put them back up in March when, I guess, was when Buster took some of us off to uh, Blue Marsh. Mm -hmm. I've had mine, uh, this will be the fourth season, so. And you can buy just the blocks without all the straps, too. That's true. Yeah. And I just use the regular old one inch NRS blue straps. So I guess we don't have any more questions about this transporting and storing. We're ready to move on to the uh, Gear Expo. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw in one more thing about transporting. Again, I leave my kayaks on top all year. When you go into the city, for instance, for 
Hillary Clinton's uh, night before the election and there's crowds and crowds of people and you get there late and you can't find a place to park, I can't park in a parking garage. So I went to the closest parking lot that you could get to the whole thing, pulled up, they were full, and walked in and said, can I park here? I can't go into a parking garage. And the guy shifted all sorts of cars around me and I couldn't have parked any closer. I have had so many good things happen to me with having two kayaks on top of my car and trying to park in the city. Good story. Awesome. Just don't try that with two bikes because they hate them down there. <laughs> it works the same with bikes. I've done it with bikes too. You can't get into a, into a uh, underground thing and they've let me park my car. I wasn't even staying at this hotel, but I started to pull in like, this was the first time. And I'm like, shit, I can't go in here. And I go to back out and some guy comes running out to me and he goes, you can just park your car right here. And he let me be in like the little circle of where, you know, they valet the cars. Oh, wow. Because every so, time I try to park anywhere with bikes on the car, I get all kinds of like angst from the, uh, the people running the lots. <laughs> There's a lot of people in Philly that are very anti-cyclist. Yeah. Wow. I have the uh, the pulley system for storing the boats on the roof of the garage, and the uh, the best one is called. It's made by Harkin. It's called the Harkin Hoister, and you just use one one rope lifts up both ends of the boat all at once. And because of the uh, the multiple pulleys, you get a mechanical advantage. You're not you're not lifting the weight of the boat. It feels more like you're lifting maybe ten or fifteen pounds. And it also has a rope break. If, if you let go of the rope, the, the boat doesn't come crashing down. It grabs, it grabs, the, uh, it grabs the rope and stops it. That's awesome. That one? It's sort of like that. Yeah, yeah, that's, yes. There's different models, whether it uh, attaches at only two places to the roof or uh, four, four, four attachments raises it up higher. It's very, it's very similar to that, yes. That's exactly it. And I have Lorraine's picture here coming up for you in just a moment. And this was a, this wasn't completed. It does look better now. And and what, what, if I could make a comment about oh. the J carriers, I've I've used Thule products mostly for forty years, but um, Malone makes some really uh, good stuff that's a little cheaper than Tully and Yakima. And um, it, I, had a, uh, I had one boat with a flat carrier and then I needed to carry a second boat. And as Jeff said, you could never fit too flat, but I couldn't fit a flat boat. And, and uh, I didn't have much space even for the J carrier. The, the Malone uh, J carriers mount with only one clamp in, in the middle of the J. So you can get it further apart and the, the bottom of the J sort of sticks out more off the side of your car. So you get more space between the boats and because it's sticking out a little, it actually makes it easier to load your, load your boat into the J. So check that out, Malone. That's it. Jeff, I have a question for Lorraine. What? What is the thing you put on your rear window that helped you guide the boat up onto the top? The actual name of it, I'm not sure, but what it is, it's a triangular type thing and it's got suction cups and it just suctions right onto the window. Okay. And then I just got bath mats and kind of cut little slits in it, you know, to protect the window in the top of the car. All right. So it is on the gear list I gave you. Uh, I'll pull okay. up a picture of it here. Uh, this is not the exact one that she has. Hers more that would work too. Water. Okay. All right. And then you cut something to fit around yours. I did. I but did. I lost the one mat that I left on the roof of the car. And when and you I do Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I went back to look for it. The only place I can think it went is it blew off and into the canal. Yeah. 
and when we store it, because your rack, right? So you store them, you don't store them upside down to not catch the water, because you have them right side up on that PVC uh, well, rack. It's in the back. garage. I don't leave it outside. Oh, OK, OK, OK. I was just taking a picture of it while I was building it. And I was it's on wheels, so I can push it. Right. Cool. I was walking around town, and I saw someone has a kayak rack built onto the side of their shed. <laughs> I'm like. Mm -hmm. That's what I need to do because I don't have anywhere to, I don't actually have anywhere to store it. My kayak's bigger than the shed, so it can't go inside. And I think if I put something up against the side of it. Just get a bigger shed. <laughs> so, Megan, these are stored outside. Usually okay. I take them right side up, but these racks can take them upside down too. Okay. But I trust my, my cockpit covers to take care of it. I think I lost my cockpit cover. I have to buy a new one. I know some place you can get them. <laughs> It's going to be a sale right now, right? It's our anniversary it's not sale, yes. It's expensive either. I forgot. I just placed an order with them, too, and I totally forgot I needed to order that. I ordered a bunch of biking stuff, not free shipping. hiking stuff. I had to get to a lot to get to free shipping. It was like a $50 minimum. It's not I hard to get we, 50 It was not. took that off, Jeff. I thought no. the minimum got taken off. It did uh, not. It went During back in pandemic. in May. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Because I placed my order this morning, so it's... I mean, yes, I ordered like seventy-five dollars worth of stuff, so I made it. But or you I forgot to that to Christiana to pick it up. Oh God, no! I'd rather have it delivered. It was only like a five-dollar delivery charge, anyways. If I had paid, had to pay for it. So we're ready for uh, favorite gear items, or we got more questions about racks and transporting. Favorite cure sounds good. All right, here we're going to Megan first. Oh wait, what? That's <laughs> <laughs> so what I get for opening my mouth, right? And my favorite gear is like sort of boring because my favorite gear is my hydro flask, right? I've got three of them in different sizes, and I bought a hair ca carrying handle. Oh, then my virtual background is messing it up. For when I go hiking, not for when I go kayaking. But I just like my hydro flask. That's my favorite part of, of my kayaking gear. I do too, Megan. I have one. Right? Oh, the carrying handle or hair, uh, hydro flask? Uh, this is the hydro flask and it has the new carry handle. Oh, see, I got a, I got a different one. I think, I'm sure I ordered this off of Amazon. It's like some sort of fabric-y one or one of those survival Perfect. board things. Yeah. Rated. But, you know, when it's when it's cold out, it'll keep your hot drinks hot, and when it's warm out, it'll keep your cold drinks cold. And that's to me the Only important. Only two, part. Andrew. <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I had two of them. Uh, I know, because then here's my here's my other one, right? Like I've got two two sides. I got a third one somewhere. I don't remember where it's at now. My third one's at the bottom of Mallow's bag. Oh no! Uh oh no! Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a good place for it. No. Speaking of bottom of a bay, um, we make floatable sunglasses too. They're called unsinkables and they're guaranteed, meaning if they even float away from you downstream and you cannot retrieve them, if you have registered them, they will send you a new pair. They will only do that once, but <laughs> they will send you a new pair and they're unsinkable. They'll float on the top of the water. That's awesome. Nice. But they don't come in prescription, so. Oh. That would All be right, a who next? Mr. Ambassador, what do you got for us tonight? You're, you're on mute. Muted, John. Uh, I'm mute. Don't lean forward. There you go. Yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah. I, I can't show it to you, but it's the same as Megan's. I'll just give you a little story. I, I, uh, went on a couple of bad adventure trips this, this year. And one of them was to the uh, Canyonlands in, uh, in August. And it was hotter than blazes. It was hot. And, and I had a Naglene 32-ounce uh, 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 water carrier. And the water was about 109 degrees inside the carrier. So I couldn't stay cool. So I thought... My, my next trip coming up was at the end of September and it was going to be back out to Utah again to the Green River kayaking trip. And I got a 32 ounce, I went to REI and got a 32 ounce uh, uh, hydro flask. What a, what a treasure. Because like mm -hmm. Megan said, it kept the water, whatever temperature the water went in, 
that's what temperature the water was when I uh, was using it all day. So uh, unfortunately, I left it on the van oh. in Florida. Oh. Now it's it's somewhere up here in in, in southeastern Penn, in the tri-state area. Um, I don't know if you, anybody knows Carl Carl Rare, Carl Raring, but uh, he um, he supposedly has it for me. The next time I see him, I'll get it from him. So uh, <laughs> if not, I'm going to have to go buy another one because I'm so enthralled with how well they insulate the water and keep it the right temperature. So it's it's a great it's it's well worth well worth the cost. And if the vacuum seal breaks, like mine did. They will send you another one. Like if you like sign up on the website and they, cause this one is a replacement cause mine, I don't know what happened. I don't take it on the boat. I just, I don't know what happened to the vacuum seal. But if you do the boil test and pour boiling water in it, and if you feel any kind of heat through that, cause it wasn't keeping the water cool anymore. And I'm like, mm. what's going on? So you do that and you just send it back to them and they'll send you a free replacement. Wow, that's great. Oh, nice. Yeah. But nothing like, the need for cool water in the desert and I couldn't realize how much how important that was because I couldn't cool off in that canyon line strip I was so hot I just couldn't my body I just couldn't get my body temperature regulated properly mm -hmm. so uh yeah, the hydroflask saved the day and the next trip out Maureen what do you got for us well, the two things that I like, and you've already seen it, are one, my wheels, because I couldn't kayak without those. But the thing that I use more than anything else kayaking is my phone. And if anybody knows me, I just take pictures all the time. Yes. There. <laughs> do you have, a, but you don't have like a water, like a water bag, or do you have one? I did, but I never use it. <laughs> I know. And I, there's sometimes I just take my camera too. Lately, I have. Jan, did you bring anything for us tonight? Sorry, did you say who? Jan, you got anything? Mine's my hydro flask. I see. Right. <laughs> I got a big one, and I've I've even dropped it a couple times. It's got just a little bit of a dent, little chipping, but it's still ticking. Oh yeah, I got a few dents too. It just can't yeah, character. I do too. It yeah. just means it's it's well loved and well used. That's what it means. <laughs> oh, you want me to go next? Year? All right, Andrew. <laughs> it's hydro. Uh, no. Oh, there oh you go. yeah, your bat, your bag. pack. Yes. I need a summit deck bag, and it has a built-in uh, dry bag inside it. It's actually removable. But it doesn't have compartments in it, right? It's just one big like dry bag. Yeah, it's one big dry bag. Okay. So it's just, you know, yeah. It's nice though. Okay. I have that. I like it too. I that have a deck bag, but mine's not waterproof. I do like the waterproof idea. But yours also helps to shed water when you when you get into some waves, right? Yeah. Well, shed yeah, water it's a wave breaker. Water wave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, me. Yay. Uh, I'm gonna save my PFD. <laughs> it's you know it it has saved my life, so I've got to give it that. Nice. Is that a fancy one or a regular? Just like a regular PFD. This is the pro model for guides. Okay. It's, it's got the tow rope, quick release, and my knife. Pretty handy. Yeah, and the full the clamp job, so I can actually hold gear in it. So this PFD. But. All right. First aid kit on the bottom. Yeah. But yeah. It's lightweight. It breathes very nicely, so I don't sweat too much when it's hot. And that's, that's my favorite gear. <laughs> nice. Dan, you're getting ready there? Uh, yeah. Sorry. I realized I should be muting, huh? Sorry. We couldn't um, hear so you. I love my Werner. Uh, what do they call Jeff? Paddles? Paddle? Paddle? <laughs> yeah. What are we doing to the kid? They're the contour ones? Ben Chaffet? Bending bridge. Ben Chaffet. Uh, okay. Ben Chaffet. That's it. Ben Chaffet, yeah. And because they're really expensive, I finally brought, bought a bag to carry them in. Oh, they make bags for them? Yeah, but oh, yeah. the problem is. It sits in the back of my car, 
looking like a gun case. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I could see that. In our S versus in our A, it could also easily be confused. And you the one other thing I like a lot is I have not the water socks, but the water boots that have a really good um, bottom. Mm -hmm. And I canoed the boundary waters in the fall and everybody else had like boots on that they just walked through the water when they were portaging all the mud. And I had those boots on the whole time, three days, and they were amazing. I've climbed rocks with them. They're really good. All right. What's so the brand? That brings me to. Not that. I was just thinking about my water. I just bought new water. You know, I almost said my astral shoes. So? I brought two. I got my astral, which I really like because I can use those on the river and also the really nice grip soles I use when I'm running down a rocky trail. Um, and also the boundary boots, the big neoprene boots for when it's really cold out. So I can stand in the water and. Uh, Stay nice and warm. You know, I put a pair of wool socks in there if I need to. Yeah, the boots are awesome. Yeah, I love those too. I was torn. I almost pulled out my boots and my shoes, but uh, I know. I just bought a new pair of Astros. They're they, they're sitting over in the package, like decontaminating. <laughs> I looked but, online at the Astros, but I haven't ordered them yet. Well, they are they're very worth it. I'm on my fine. third pair, so. <laughs> I wear them as regular shoes. The I think they're I've got both models with me here. Yeah. My keen shoes are at least five years old, and I'm still wearing those. Yeah, I need the I need the like shoe like, not sandals, because I don't want the little rocks and sand the little in stones them. in them. I know they're a pain in the butt. That's why I went with the Astros. Yeah. Me too. That's why I, I switched to the sneakerish type of uh, shoe. If I buy when I buy new ones, I'm going to get the Astros. The nice part about the astrals is the sole actually comes out. So, oh, so you can put like a, in, an insole in? There's an insole yeah. in it that's removable, so you can wash that and it awesome. cuts down on the smell from Because <laughs> you know, the shoes smell so good when you've taken them out of the Schuylkill River and oh, put them yeah. in and left them in your car for a day. Oh, oh my God, they stink. Oh. <laughs> Lock good footage at, at Lock 60 and walk through a foot of mud to get there. Yep, yep. Oh. Lynn, you ready? Sure. Um, we covered it already, but my favorite gear is my elevator because I could not go kayaking if I don't have someone to help me lift that boat up there because I'm 5'2 and I can't lift a 50 pound kayak above my head. So um, it was a lot of money, but that was my the, a great investment because when I meet you guys on Wednesday nights, um, if Eric's not around to help me, then I can still go and then I can load the boat. I don't need help. And I just, it, it's heavy, but it's the best thing I ever bought. I was really happy I spent the money on that. And you got two of them, so you can load two boats by yourself. Actually, no, I only have one. I have a J hooks on the other side, so I can only load one boat by myself. So Eric someone else has to help <laughs> with the J hook. <clears throat> I think that would crush my car like a soda can. <laughs> that would definitely exceed the weight limit. I think I'm pushing it right now with the elevator <laughs> and the J hooks and two kayaks on it. <laughs> it Harry, you got anything for us tonight? I'm sorry? You got something special to show us tonight? No, I'm just learning. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Barb? No, I, I have a long list of things I want to buy now. <laughs> right. I know. Hullivator is on my list <laughs> yeah. of things to buy. but Yeah. So um, for, well, I got a kayak, I don't know, back in 2010. And mostly I've just been kayaking by myself on a lake. Because um, I didn't know other people to kayak with. And I had a minivan that... I could get my kayak inside. I'm sure you've all seen that. So I just have to get the nose up on the lip of the back and I can just shove it in. Well, in March, I sold my minivan. Yeah. It, was 200, it was a 2003 and it had 200,007 miles on nice. it. Nice. Um, and I sold it and now I don't know how to kayak. Because I don't have a transport system, yeah. and I'm not strong, 
anymore. Um, and so I, I'm going to try the, you know, I have a Subaru with a rack on the top. I'm going to try the foam blocks, I think, first. But um, I need all this gear. I need everything. <laughs> <laughs> it flex so, over time. And personally, the one thing I have that has been useful is I do have a waterproof um, sleeve that I put a cell phone in. And you can actually use the phone without taking it out of the mm -hmm. sleeve. And I have a work phone because I'm on call sometimes and I can protect it in that and take it with me. So that's it. Not, not very exciting. No, very exciting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ms. Wortley, can I come to you next? Sure. Um, I, I enjoy all kinds of, uh, kayaking that we've done, but I, I really like night kayaking. So I go to the dollar store <laughs> and I buy these glow in the dark bracelets that go on the front and back and the sides of my boat. And on your wrists, I've seen them. Right. And on my wrist or uh, yeah, they go on the paddles too. So I really like these things. And I usually have some in a dry bag on the boat, all handy. Having said that, by the way, the first full moon kayak uh, of the season is about two weeks away, mm. uh, 4th or 5th of June. If anybody's interested, message me. I might be able to uh, get together. <clears throat> Just and, in time for the quarantine to be lifted? Uh, so a lot of lakes are open. Now oh, true. is uh, 24 hours, so... I believe. And secondly, um, a few weeks ago, I was on a hike and um, we were all out of cell phone range. And I thought, gee, nobody could communicate. So I did some investigation and I found a pair of family radios that, um, besides having the usual family radio features, they also float. Uh, says, very helpful. Floating. Floating. Oh, now nice. I've charged them up, and um, I got it when my uh, daughter comes home from college or somebody else. We're gonna have to take go off at a distance and see how far apart they actually work. <laughs> but for a group that gets split apart, it seems like it's a good way to stay in contact. Yeah. I'll have to let you know. Yeah, I found the radios when you're sitting in the boat really close to the water. They're not as great as they, they claim to be. Mm. I believe that to be true. If you want to hold them up over your head and yell at them, they do better. But when you're so close to the water, they just, I guess, they too much roundness of the earth or something, they don't get the signal very well. Especially if there's any kind of land and islands near you that you got to transmit through. Mm. Some obstruction, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Doug keeps wandering away. Are you ready to go without him? Yep. Well, it, it, the things that I normally well, I get this. all got eliminated oh. by other people. So. <laughs> but people were talking about things stinking from the water and their um, shoes and so forth. So there's this oh. called Sink the Stink. Um, and it's used by mainly by divers for neoprene and so forth. Um, but it works fantastic. Um, and you, you don't even need much of it. And you let your shoes soak in it or your vest or anything and it lasts for a long time the cake takes out it kills the the bacteria that causes the odor so if you have shoes and stuff that you can't even stand to have in your car with you or whatever <laughs> this is some good stuff it has saved us <laughs> i've definitely regretted leaving some things in my car overnight after kayaking Whew. yeah yeah, yeah. And even, you know, well, you can wash down your PFDs and stuff too, right. with soap and water, but other, other equipment sometimes just can get moldy and so forth or diving equipment. But so that's it. And I like my, even though it doesn't keep things hot or um, cold, I like my Nalgene with this because I could do it with one hand. And, um, and it also has the little loop for a carabiner. 
But it won't save me in the desert. <laughs> but if you had a hydro flask with one of those, what I call the sippy lids, you don't even need a hand. You can just pull it up with your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I love the sippy lids. My, my hydro too. flasks have to have the straw sippy lid thingy. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. That's how lazy I am. I don't even want to open it. Or you getting from both of you? All right, they're great. When what'd you say? I was wondering if we're getting something from Doug also, or Chris is representing the two of them. No, no. she's representing both. <laughs> All right. Uh, we can go into other equipment, but we, we're narrowed down for paddling equipment. Yeah. So. Uh, Debbie, what do you got? Anything? Yeah, actually, and I couldn't find mine. Um, but I went on some outdoor store's website, and um, so I, I, I did a climb and wanted to bring a good camera and keep it at the ready. And this Peak Design um, camera clip um, is a way to put, I don't want to highlight that, way to attach a good camera to like a backpack strap or shoulder on um, a PFD. And uh, I love it to be able to have the camera close at hand. Do you find that easily accessible? Because I do have something that I use for, I have a, like a waterproof, like rugged camera and it straps in on my PFD, but I, I find it awkward to try to like get it out of that to then use the camera. Is that really easily accessible? This one's really easy. There's like, I make sure to put it on my left side. Mm -hmm. So I'm using my right hand. And, I, and if I remember right, cause it's been a little while since I used it, there's like a quick release button. Okay. Just slide it out, you know? So then for a woman finding the right height to not hit your face, <laughs> Okay. In the way for other, you know, that would be the one other challenge. Okay. But I love it. It's it's a good option. Oh, good. Because the other one I have, it's like, it's all strapped in and then trying to like finagle the camera to get it out. It's just, I'm like, this have to, a, by the one, one I Megan? wanted a picture of Quick is release. gone. Yeah, this one here is the... Uh... Yes, that's what I have, but that's like hard to get the, get it out of that. I'm not quick enough to get it out of that. Yeah, this does require that it be a camera that has the, um, the, the some place to screw in like you would use a um, tripod. Tripod, sure, okay. I didn't know we had that, that's good, I'll go look for it. Nice. Do I get commission? I know, like you <laughs> learned something new today. <laughs> what did we do? <laughs> uh, well, I kind of lost track of who I've been to or not. We got Monica, right? Yeah. Got something for us? Um, so mine is actually my kind of oh, what the hell? It's absolutely <laughs> awesome. So I live in an apartment with a really tight entryway and don't have a ton of storage space. And I also don't have any kind of rack on my car. So I can get this to share. Oh, come on. You little shit. Sorry, but you're not having a second now. <laughs> What's Lorraine going on about? I don't know, I just muted her. <laughs> Lorraine's having a party. She really is. She's yelling at those cats. I don't think she realizes that she's muted. <laughs> so I actually missed Monica the first like the first sentence of what you said. I know you said you had a, like a tight space. So what was what was the deal? Yeah, so I live in an apartment with a really like tight curved entryway and two okay. doors to get in. And so it's a, it's a pain getting anything in and out of here. Um, I also don't have a ton of storage space. So my, my kayak is actually one of those. those <gasps> Do you have one of those ones that come apart? Uh, it doesn't, well, it actually just folds up really small. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm trying to see if I can get this uh, to actually there. Packet yeah. Oru? A packet, uh, yeah, was a packet yak? No, an Oru, right? It is an Oru. So can you guys oh. see that? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. All unfolded, but it goes down to be about that size and just go right into the trunk of my car. Is that the bay? Oh, that's really nice. And the paddles all collapse too, so you can actually quarter them so they aren't any wider than like the width of the actual oh, car. That'd be all cool. Folded up. But <laughs> this thing is absolutely awesome. That is they, cool. they are like light as a feather in the water too. It yeah, really, it, it weighs 28 pounds, so like yeah, it really feels I can good. Just pull it up with one hand. It's fantastic. Feather in the water. Too. I look like a superhero, just like hauling a. a <laughs> one it's great. They it's also like magic have, when you put it together. 
<laughs> they have a backpack unit that you can actually carry it on your back and I've seen people on a bicycle with them. Oh, yeah. Wow. So what I actually I want to do is actually get like a little bike trailer that way I can tow it with me on trips. <gasps> that would be cool. Because <laughs> uh, I do a lot of bike camping too, so like, that's kind of a, a perfect fit for that. How does it handle as far as speed compared to a traditional kayak? Um, speed wise, it's very very comparable. I will say like once you hit a little bit of current, it's a lot bouncier than you would be used to in like a normal kayak. But I got used to it fairly quickly. Um, and it's actually how I found out about this group because it's a great conversation starter. <laughs> <laughs> it does it does it like does it is it paddle like does it stay true well or is it oh, kind yeah. of like all over? No, it's it's great. Okay. Um, like I said, it gets a little bouncy, but when you're paddling, you're going in the exact direction that you want to go in. It's very, very maneuverable. So I'm absolutely thrilled with it. Nice. They make, I think, three different models now. You have the middle one, which uh, is there's, the there's bay. There's five, actually. All right, they're up then. Yeah. Uh, the bay, it, they do their job. They're great boats for someone who needs the space. Uh, Comfort-wise, they're not going to be the same as like a dagger or a wilderness. Um, but we have a couple people in our group to paddle with them. Uh, Travis comes out occasionally. Uh, Vlad, I think, has one. I think Deb just brought one, too. Deb oh Fable? Yeah, I think she bought one. Hi. They um, came out with a tandem this year, I think. And they're designed for 20,000 folds. Yep. Wow. Right. Every day for 27 years before the plastic breaks down on you. That's not bad. Well, a couple things. That one, he had to duct tape it. <laughs> Duct tape is good. Um, who they else have, we haven't talked to yet? One second, Jeff. Let me say some other things about the Oru because it's kind of important. They, the lower end model has just regular straps. They have to be like buckled together in certain places, which, you know, the straps are attached and you just buckle them together. But the problem is, um, especially the very first version they did, you had to push really hard to get the pieces together for the buckles to go in. They're easier to push together now, but they now have a ratchet buckle. So you just clip the buckle and then you ratchet to pull the pieces together. Pay the, I think it's another $100 more to get that ratchet piece because it makes a huge difference in putting it together. Yeah, um, the other thing, I didn't even realize they had a ratchet piece. I don't know if they have it for the one that I got. Um, but I will say that like, where, where we do have to push a little bit. If you just tip it on its side and push down a tiny bit, it goes together no problem. Good. And the other thing that's fun about them is they're translucent. So if you're going at night and you can put colored lights in the bottom of them and it's really pretty. Oh, I am so doing that. That oh, would yeah, be it's cool. really pretty. <laughs> that would be awesome. Would, especially if you have a light that that does um like strobe of different colors. It's really neat because you're like magical out on the water. I have tons of strobing lights. <laughs> yeah, we do a, a winter paddle every year for in early December at night for the luminaries where we laid up our boats. Oh, cool. I know I just found the string of lights that I had the last time I did the luminaries, which was several years ago, that I used to light up my kayak and they took the pictures of us at the at the um the dock in the lock there. And if you really want to light up your kayak, you get the light switches like Jeff did and put them inside your kayak. <laughs> That worked really well. Had a lot actually. of LEDs inside that night. Huh? Had a lot of LED lights inside that night. You did. But unfortunately, the ice was too thick, so we didn't get to paddle down with them. And... Um, have we been to Barb yet? Yeah, we did Barb. Yeah, Barb. Jay? I don't have any novelty gear, but I do have some novel ways of... Uh, uh, taking it with me, if I could show you some pictures here. Um, we already, okay, can you see this? Yep. Okay, you've seen the deck bag uh, that one of the other guys had. I think it was blue. Mine is the faded yellow. Um, I don't care to have the deck bag on top of the deck. I like to have clean lines. So what I do, oh, I can't change to the next picture, is I suspend it underneath. So 
what I'm going to do is suspend it underneath the, underneath the deck, there were my compasses. You'll see hanging there a mask, that's a fabric mask that I use to stretch under the bag to kind of create a hammock so that once it's in place, it looks like this. So my feet can slide underneath the bag and it is suspended there, but it's out of sight and it's off my deck. I call it my glove box. It's like a glove box to a car, but um, that's where I keep my sponge and gloves and sunglasses and um, small things that fit in that bag. That's really helpful. Another little trick that I do is I have all my safety gear, a bilge pump and a flotation bag if I capsize, um, and I keep it in that net bag. And if you look closely, you'll see a bungee cord that I have screwed into the, into the sides of the boat. So every time I paddle, I take my safety bag and wedge it into that uh, bungee cord that keeps it at my side. So that way it's accessible, but it's out of my way and I have it every time. Uh, one final thing to show you is when my children were young, we had these big plastic buckets and I kept one and it's great to hold all my gear. So when I go away for the day, I just put that whole thing in the back seat of my car. And then when I'm at the launch, I figure out which uh, stuff that I need. Invariably, I would get to the launch and forget something that I left behind in the garage. So I came to the point of taking everything with me. Then I got a little lazier and I got a wheelbarrow that I set it in and there's my paddles and my safety bags and my straps. So once, when I'm ready to go, I just wheel my wheelbarrow out to the car, put the bucket in the back seat and all my stuff is right there. So call me lazy, but it's efficient. <laughs> and uh, I, I tend not to forget uh, things that I need with me. So there's just some shortcuts or some gear, the ways that I transport uh, the accumulation of gear that I bring with me. So Diane, you don't need a Oru kayak to light up the inside of the there boat. There you go. Oh, wow. Nice. You need that is lit. Light. How strong were these lights? It had a big extension cord running from the... <laughs> <laughs> From uh, Harbor Freight, I think. Wow, I there. I that is awesome. I at the dollar store and they're just as bright. Wow, I'm impressed. Still like the other room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it would be a little bit colder in December though. That's true. Uh, let's see, who have, so, have we not? Any, so right? do you guys Who's wear, that? do you guys have wetsuits? Uh, I have splash gear, not wet or dry gear. Okay. So I same here. I'll put on some splash pants, some uh, synthetic base layer, and a splash top and a neoprene skirt. Okay. And for as cold as it has been, we've n I've never been cold. Mm -mm. And the reason okay. I bought the neoprene boots I showed you earlier was because I'll stand in the water and help people get in and out of the boats at our portages. That's when I wear my snow boots <laughs> and my snow pants. We'll do what we can to keep it dry on our trips. Yep. It works very We've well. Only ever had one person get wet, and he's not one that usually gets wet. <laughs> well, two. Yeah, Rob got more than one. Yeah, Rob got a lot. Oh, that's right. That's right. You can hear me yelling, and he got wet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're ready for Annie, right? Me? You got something, or do we already go to you? The, no, the the other Annie or me? <laughs> you. Me, um, do, do I think I do as I do usually rear load and that's when the carpet comes in handy just to slide it up the back. Um, I did buy the, the wheelies, you know, to load it up and that rolls better. Uh, I have the cradles in the front and wheels in the back and just it's, it's going a lot easier for me now to load up the kayak. I still need a stool to get up because I do have a Jeep Renegade, it's a little tall. So, but it's been, when it was out twice this summer already, so. Right. It's just, just my storing is a little, I was asking about before about storing because 
the shed I have is like really full of stuff. <laughs> and that's, it is a tall ceiling, so I can't stand it up. And if you can, usually stuff hanging off the ceiling isn't usually there. So if you can hang some hooks and some webbing, uh, like when I worked in Kanchak and Diane probably tell you better, but there's just four S hooks hanging off the ceiling and a, a loop of webbing for two loops of webbing, one from each pair of hooks. Yeah. Um, takes two people to get them up there usually, but if you rig yourself a pulley, you could probably lift up there. And that's space on top of the car that's nothing that's using right now. Okay. Or that, that park, might... park in your shed. Or that thing that you pulled up, Jeff, the one that's uh, the lift that just has the rope underneath. Or I think somebody said the Harkin hoist. I don't yeah, that hoist thing anymore. I'm talking about. Yeah. Harkin hoist. Um, you're talking about the Tully hoist. Either one. I mean, they're, yeah, same concept. And the Tully okay. hoist has a, you know, you're not pulling on anything. There's this wine mechanism that's, yeah, see the. Oh, wow. Point to that, Jeff, the winding mechanism. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so you just do a bunch of this and it's lifting it up equally on all sides. And yeah, that's how you raise and lower basketball hoops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of those little thingies. <laughs> okay. There he is with the boat. Yay. It's only 175. Hmm. It's not too bad. It takes a little bit to get it hung properly, just so you know that. If you're not, you don't love standing on ladders and doing things above your head, they're a little tricky to install. I don't mind doing that. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that leaves with Mark and Linda who don't have video on. I don't know if either of you have anything for us tonight. I guess that's a no. <laughs> uh, we got everybody else, right? Okay. So I'm going to stop the stream and stop recording and just be social time for a little bit. Cool.